Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all well. So in today's video, as you guys can see from the title below, I thought I would do something slightly different. So I thought I would share with you guys the things I wish I knew before I rented my studio, my art studio, my design studio, whichever we want to call it. So if you guys are new to my channel, and haven't really seen the journey of how I got my studio in the first place. Um, all my old subscribers will know I wanted a studio so badly. Like that was on my wish list for this year. Was not even for this year for for ages. I've always just wanted my own studio because um, it was just really hard to like work out of my house, and I just wanted a space to call my own. So thankfully, I got to find a studio this year. But there's a lot of things I learned along the way, and I'm a big person on reflecting and just thinking about the stuff that I would have done differently. So now that I've moved out, I've kind of just like thought about the things that I think maybe would help some other people out if they are looking for studios as well, and what I would look for going forward if I was to get another studio. So the first thing I probably would say is location. The pros were it was near my house and it was near my work. The cons were there was no parking and I. I couldn't drive there plus I don't have a license to drive so the first thing was it was so difficult to get things in the studio if you guys I don't know if I still have them up or they're private I've vlogged me moving into the studio and it was so difficult to do because of the location there was nowhere to park my mum helped me and I kind of had to lug everything through a shopping center area to get to my studio and yeah it was just such a headache and I didn't even that didn't even cross my mind but I wish I found somewhere that had really good parking because where it was located it was underneath a set of apartments so there were all new builds of studios underneath these new builds of apartments so unless you lived in the building above you could go into the car park but if you didn't um, rent or own any of the buildings above you couldn't use the car park so it's pretty much impossible to park anywhere so trying to get all my things into the studio was a headache so make sure you find the best location that is ideal for you and especially if you drive find somewhere that has good parking because I did that even crossed my mind and that was so stupid of me to even um, not think of that but anyway yeah that was my first struggle my second struggle kind of goes in with driving i i realize now that i'm a i'm a creative that's very spontaneous so the fact that i would have to leave my house to go to the studio to be creative or do something creative kind of put me off most of the time and made me not go as much as i wish i did because the spontaneity is sort of like i could be in my room right now and like pull out my sewing machine or pull out a sketchbook or pull out a canvas and just start painting or drawing or sewing but i couldn't do that when i had my studio because i would think okay i have an idea for something i need to schedule when i'm going to go to the studio and then by the time i do go i don't feel like i'm in the mood to go anymore so yeah i noticed my creative my creativity is very spontaneous and i can't box it into a specific time or day that i want to do it even though it was as pretty close to my house as it was about a 20 minute bus ride um it would be much quicker in the car but i didn't drive so i really should have ticked off um passing my driving test before i actually um ended up working in my studio because i feel like i probably would have been more inclined to just jump in my car and go to the studio but nevertheless it was still pretty easy to get there and i did try my hardest to go when i would like finish work or when i'd be on my lunch break so i would just go to my studio and then run back to my lunch break so i also did that as well and the third point is space so the space that i had is i would say a little bit smaller than my bedroom that i have right now but the thing that made it feel bigger was the fact that they had four meter high ceilings and i think that just gave it more of an open feel and it made me feel like it was bigger even though the space was a little bit smaller and i tried my hardest to work with the space that i had but i realize now that i am a person i really don't know how to describe this guys but the way they designed the studios was they basically were like cut in half so the front half of the building was facing outward so they had windows and then the back half of the studios was where i was so there's like the front half of the studios and then a hallway and then the back half of the studios which is where i was so i didn't have any windows in my studio i thought it wouldn't bother me as much but i think as i stayed there um over the months i think it did bother me more than i thought it would there was like a tiny window that would look onto the um first studio that was actually facing the windows so i had some sort of light but obviously it wasn't direct sunlight from um a big big like bay window or a um ceiling to floor window so yeah in the beginning i thought yeah it's not gonna be bother me. it's not gonna bother me it's fine i was just happy that i had the space 
but I think over time I realised I work better like knowing that the rest of the world is going on around me like I can see people walking past my window or the sun setting or birds outside I feel like I react better to just normal daylight and when I was in there I kind of lost the concept of what time it was during the day like I literally just never like I would go in there especially the winter time I would go in there and then I would leave at like I don't know nine ten o'clock at night but I wouldn't even know what time it was outside because I just I didn't see the sunset I didn't see anything so I would just it kind of yeah I think it crushed my creativity a little bit as well I tried to work with it as best I could that was another thing I learned it didn't cross my mind of what I would do with everything if I did move out of my studio um if I was to get another studio I probably would get somewhere that has maybe a little bit of storage so I don't have to like buy all the storage myself or maybe have it half furnished so I don't have to take everything with me so the big main things I still have in my house right now my parents are literally killing me over is I have um my big desk and um a clothing rail because I bought another one I have one in my house right now that I store my coats on and then I had another one for all my designs and my um and my depop stock so I just didn't it didn't cross my mind of what am I going to do with these things if I move out so I think I would go for somewhere that's like half furnished so I can just use the furniture that they have there and then if I do want to leave I can and blah 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 stuff like that so that was all about the storage and the space my fourth point is information yes my fourth point would be get all the information that you can i was really stupid and didn't like find out everything the main thing i didn't really find out properly was how what my notice was like so the first thing was that my notice was three months and i don't think I'd, if i was gonna get a studio again i would try my hardest to find somewhere that doesn't want a three months notice because three months is a long time and if you just want to be out of there straight not straight away but like in a certain amount of time three months is very very long and um yeah my communication between the person that was like looking over everyone that was basically the tenants in the studios wasn't the best i didn't have his email i didn't have i had his phone number but i didn't realize that was like his personal phone number so sometimes he wouldn't answer it and yeah it was just the communication and the information that i got for the stuff like that was very minute like i barely had anything they just gave me like a pamphlet and i didn't read through that i'm a verbal person like if you tell me to do something i will do it so yeah i think i should have just asked way more questions than i actually did but everything was new to me so i didn't really know what to expect but yeah definitely guys if you're gonna get a studio make sure you find out everything so the main information that i probably definitely would find out was my notice um who exactly do i speak to do i email do i do a text do i just write something do i verbally let you know all those things i just i wish i knew before but I learnt now, I learnt my lesson, so if I do find somewhere new, I'm going to ask all of those questions. And then the last point is basically the people and where I was. So even though I really loved my space and I loved the concept that all of the, all of the tenants that were in my studio, there was about one, two, three, four, five, about seven other people it within the building of where I was and there were so many different uh, mediums that everyone was doing some people did ceramics and pottery some people were seamstress, some people were photographers some people were graphic designers and I liked that there were just so many different types of people there doing different things but the only thing I think I wish I had more of the people of my age group because everyone there was everyone within my building was much much older than me and i just wish i had someone to like bounce off that was around my age group or like there was no one i could really like connect to or just like um get to know even though everyone in that building was lovely and i got to meet quite a few people but um there was no i know that i think i would definitely find if i was to find another studio find somewhere that had like a communal area because we did have a kitchen and a bathroom but everyone would kind of come out of their studio, close the door, go to a little, go to the kitchen and then shut the door again. So there was no like, okay, everyone can have their own space and that is their space. So if they want to open the door, they can. If they don't want to, they don't have to. But if there was like a communal where everyone would chill or hang out or I feel like I would want that. That way everyone gets chatting and talking because the only re the only way everyone would really start chatting or talking is if you actually physically went up to their door. But if no one did that, then no one would know who was in that studio. So that was my video, guys. It was just something super quick. Um, yeah, I thought I would share if this helps anyone out. And I probably would like look back at this video 
and remind myself of the do's and don'ts that I would do again if I was to get another studio but for now I will be moving I'll be moving I'll be working out of my room again but yeah that was a video I hope you guys enjoyed if you did please do give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already if you guys are new to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video Sun is shining, feeling so blessed Surrounded by positive heads Surrounded by people I can cry with